I'm not really sure exactly what I want to make these videos about, but um, all I know is recently I've been spending a lot of time working on this boat, and I've realized even people that know me pretty well don't really realize how much work goes into this or what kind of work goes into building a boat. And there's also a whole bunch of people that I've never met before that maybe see this video on YouTube and be either inspired to build their own boat or just find entertainment in watching and learning. A little bit of background about myself. Uh, my name is Trevor Parker. I'm 22 years old. Uh, will be for another month or so. And uh, I just graduated college. I haven't had that many jobs otherwise than lifeguarding at the ocean for most of my career. And in 2014, about four or five years ago, I started a surfboard company making solid wooden surfboards that you saw earlier. And um, yeah, this has been my most ambitious project yet, making this boat. And hopefully we'll push the business, or lack thereof, into its next, <laughs> next level, or we'll see exactly what comes of this. But. So I think that's enough about me. Uh, now let's introduce the real star of the show. Uh, the 16 or soon to be 16 foot sailboat Tara. Um, as far as all the names go, it may get confusing. Let me move that. It's going to be 16 foot because I'm going to attach these pontoons from a Prindle 16. So when fully... Um, I don't want to say exposed, but when fully deployed, it's going to be about 16 feet. And I'm going to make this under my business, which is called 60s. And the model name is going to be a Wavedar. So it's going to be a Wavedar 16 made by 60s. And the personal name of it is Tara. T-A-R-A-H. Why, you may ask? I have no idea, but she kind of named herself that. We might go more into that in the future. Another thing I wanted to show in these videos was how to actually build a boat while still balancing real life. I've seen a lot of these videos on YouTube where a lot of these people don't seem to work. I don't know how they fund their projects or how they really follow their dreams to the fullest. I would love to do something like that, but I just haven't figured out a way to full time follow my dreams really. So in these video series I also kind of want to go into my finance and my job situation and how I'm funding it and also kind of the emotional things behind it about how I feel and the lack of motivation you feel sometimes when you're looking at something like this right here. Like that's a mistake. I gotta figure out how to deal with that. And that material is like completely unsandable. So yeah. As you can see, the sailboat has definitely had some work already put into it. It's not finished by any means, but I think that's kind of one of the issues is I'm starting this video series from a half-built boat. Um, my most recent project was actually putting all this white primer on the interior. In fact, I gotta put another coat in pretty soon here. This was a proper build video. Um, you guys would get to see it from the drawings all the way to the dip into the water, all the way to the maiden voyage. But we're doing this a little bit different. I didn't really have much inspiration to film until now. So we're going to start from whatever point we're at now. I would love to think I'm more than halfway done, but um, who really knows? I've never built a boat before. I started off by creating the hole. If you look down here, we have the ground and it goes up here like this and it's made out of the same material that I would build my surfboards with. Um, it's known as polonia wood and it doesn't need any fiberglass or resin, it's super resistant to salt water. Um, so I thought that would be a great material not only to build the bottom of the boat out of, but all these supporting skeleton structures are also built out of it. So even if water does somehow get through the fiberglass and into the wood, I really believe that wood's just not going to decompose or warp or whatever salt water does to the wood. Unfortunately, or I mean not unfortunately, but there is other plywood I'm using in here that's not polonia, so that is still potentially exposed to the salt water and can rot and things like that. But I've done my best to fiberglass it and make sure it's completely covered. Um, 
and I'll have to continue doing it for parts like these. As far as the design of the boat, you'll notice what's different about this than most boats is how small it is. It's only about 13 feet, the center hole, and it has this weird kind of pilot house slash cabin on it. And the point of that is I used to have a Catalina 27, and that boat was incredible. But whenever I would be sailing at night, which I ended up doing a lot because I didn't have too much time, or whenever I'd be sailing in a good wind, which is really when you want to be sailing, uh, I just get really cold and then the rain would get me and I was just like, why is this so uncomfortable, you know? Like, why is there no, you can have things like a bimini, uh, they make these like, they're kind of like removable tops that you can put on, but those don't really even cover you that well. And I was thinking, well most cars are not convertibles, in fact, there's no cars that <laughs> have just an open, like, place where you drive. The driver's seat's always enclosed. So that was my philosophy in here. I thought you the main driving position, there's going to be a seat right there, and all of the lines from the mast and from the sails are all going to lead into here. So you can completely control the boat from the inside. And as you can see, these black lines, these represent kind of my idea for where I want the windows to be. And you're going to be able to see, be completely comfortable, and control the whole boat from the interior and I wanted to do this in this especially small boat because I hate anchoring now in my experience with the uh, with the Catalina anchoring I could never sleep a good night I mean I was pretty novice yes at anchoring and all that but I just didn't like the idea that I could drift and within moments be in the surf and hitting rocks and losing everything I owned on the boat so I decided, wouldn't it be much more comfortable if you could bring the boat onto the beach? So that's the reasoning, or a little bit of the reasoning behind the flat bottom and the short length. Uh, this thing's designed to pull up onto the beach and you can actually camp either on the boat or bring a tent and camp right next to the boat um, on the beach. And that way you can get a good night's sleep knowing you're not gonna drift in. A lot of my Now a lot of my friends and people I've known have expressed their concerns with this rectangular shape. Um, to be honest, it may be a little bit interesting, but I think we're really going to have to wait until it's built to see the sailing characteristics. Because if you take a look at the prindle holes, these are quite the opposite. Instead of rectangular, they're very, very fine point. They're just going to slice through the water. And there's going to be about three feet of length going in front of that hole. So I'm hoping that this will do most of the chop through the wave so that that hole won't slap. The real reason for the rectangular hole was off of one of my surfboard designs. Uh, I can't take all the credit for this. In fact, I got a lot of inspiration from people like George Greeno and Daniel Thompson um, with this rectangular board shape, uh, the, the modern planing hole as they call it. And basically it's all about planing. It's a flat surface and just like skipping a rock. You think of what kind of rock you want to skip, a flat, long rock is going to skip much better than a curvy, um, I don't know, curvy circular rock. Like, you wouldn't want to skip this thing, it wouldn't skip through the water well. So I'm hoping that this will actually start planing and you can actually surf down the waves. Henceforth the model name, Wavedar, it's kind of like a radar but for waves. Of Wavedar, um, the main purpose for this, or at least most of my sailing experience, has been out here to the Channel Islands. And those islands create incredible surf spots. And accessing those surf spots can be incredibly difficult because you have the Pacific Ocean between you, even though it's not that far of a distance. So I wanted to create a small and efficient way to get out there with you and maybe a couple buds and uh, really show the waves what you can do. Um, so that's the main reason I built this boat, is to pursue my passion in surfing. And I mean, who knows, maybe you have a good time getting out to the islands. Maybe it's not all about the destination. So as you probably noticed, this thing is not close to the ocean. Camarillo is at least like 30 minutes from the closest like harbor. So how am I going to get into the water? Well, I don't want to pay for the oversized crane to come over here and put it onto a giant flatbed. So. My plan is to trailer it behind my small little Chevy HHR. And how I'm gonna do that 
is this design that I actually found online and kind of bulked up. Um, I forget the name of the designer, which I should probably look up. Um, but he was in Florida and he created these things, these Akas that fold. And there will be a little bowl right here and it folds, allowing the pontoon that will be attached to the end of it. So imagine that, that pontoon's attached to the end. When you fold it, all from the inside, you're gonna be able to control it all from in there. It's gonna fold up and it will comply with California's eight foot and six inches um, law. You can't have anything, you can't tow a load wider than eight feet and six inches in California without a permit or oversized load. So that's how I'm planning on making it wide. As you can see, I already have this all fiberglassed. I mean, it could use some help, but these things are pretty much there. I just run into a couple problems, uh, which we'll be talking about more in detail later, about how the length of everything and how I'm actually gonna make it work. But that's kinda <laughs> the whole design process for this. In fact, the initial design didn't really look like this at all. Of course the hole did, but my pilot house looked a little bit different. Um, I had to rip off the roof once. So this is all a learning experience and I'm hoping by watching these videos you guys can maybe get some entertainment out of my suffering or maybe learn. Or maybe you'll realize that you're way smarter than me and that you could build a way better boat than me. Uh, and that's probably true. You know, I just want to tell people it's not uh, this foreign thing that somebody who has went to school for their whole life that's like a naval architect can do. It's pretty, it's pretty simple as far as I understand it, but maybe I don't understand it. As far as the sail and the rig, um, I'll be using that mast right there, which is from the Prindle 16, and it's going to actually attach right in there somewhere so this whole section in here is going to be hollow and my thinking for that is i wanted to be able to sleep in here and i think you could probably sleep in here if your head was up there but if you do a quick 180 turn with me you can also put your feet down there now i haven't primed it or done much down there that's also where the batteries are going to go and that's to that brings us to today's project um, we need to build our battery box, which is where our batteries are going to go because I want this to be an, an electric engine um, That way it's nice and quiet and I don't have to deal with the idea of something exploding or the loud noises of a gasoline engine. A little off topic, but I just kind of want to show you what I've been working on for the past couple days along with um, along with priming the whole interior I built this little door just out of some leftover plywood, some fiberglass, and it just fits right in here where it should. Let's see. I may have to do some sanding to get it perfect. Okay. Looks like there's some work to be done there, but I think it's starting to look kind of like more than just wood, you know, and it's going to pivot open like this, and I'm hoping that I got to clean all this up but I'm hoping that this is gonna perfectly fit in there and it's gonna stop water because there's gonna be like a some sort of foam thing that when it gets squeezed, it will make a watertight seal around the border. So hopefully, but I mean, if water gets in here, it's not the end of the world. That's why today we're gonna be creating a watertight battery box. So even if water gets into, let's say our main hole, uh, the, you won't get shocked because the batteries will be uh, in an isolated area All right guys, so now I'm gonna be showing you my shop uh, Let's move on in Here is the goodness as you can see I don't have much space and Nor do I need much space. So up here. I have all my chemicals the things that are gonna kill you Well, I guess a lot of things in here could kill you. I'm not gonna stand in here Because I don't like breathing in all those fumes but uh, basically we have hardening for polyester all of our polyester resins are down there five gallon drums we have some acetone to keep our tools good some surfboard materials um there's our q-cell we were talking about that makes it thicker uh we got our gloves quick access gotta go through a ton of those especially when you're fiberglassing 
I gotta figure out a better place for this paint that doesn't belong there. Drill, use a flathead for all sorts of things. Um, and then this is like my general like measuring stuff, writing stuff. It's a mess. Um, it really is, but I know where everything's at. I call this my BSI box, um, body substance isolation, little EMT reference there. <laughs> and um, inside I have my mask, I got some glasses, some goggles I never wear. And this used to be my Tevlar suit or something, Tevex, I don't know. Ooh, I didn't know I had any more of these. So these go inside of the respirator and filter. Oh yes, I'll refill those today, awesome. But as you can see, this thing's gotten pretty beat and it doesn't protect me much from the fiberglass. And as you can, yesterday I was painting in like shorts and I have paint just everywhere. Let's see, yeah, so. BSI is a huge thing, especially if you have any plans after you're done working on the boat for the day. And I mean, sometimes you only get an hour or two to work on the boat, and it takes you like an hour to get ready. It's kind of messed up. Now we'll move in. This is where my tools are at. Uh, here we have a planer, an electric planer. Um, this is my router. I haven't used that too much. My number one tool, my jigsaw. Uh, belt sander I probably need a new belt on that my second favorite tool my orbital sander and as you can see there are no table tools here so that's all I'm using electric planer and this stuff just cut the wood if I can't do it uh, I, I try to find a way to do it ignore all this stuff up here this is actually a cork board I was trying to hollow out and put carbon fiber on but on top of the fact that it weighs like 30 pounds, hollowing it out, it takes forever. So that's kind of on the back burner. Uh, a surfboard that I told myself I was gonna repair for ding repair. We have a steam box. So when I was bending wood, I would use this to generate steam. Good old fiberglass, and I'm pretty sure there's some fiberglass back there, correct? And what else is in here? That's kind of not, that's like my dad's stuff. I don't really go over there. Um, and my trash can, which is just a Home Depot bucket. Um, yeah, so th those are all the tools it's taken me to get Tara to this point right here. So I think that's semi, not impressive, not like impressive that I have skill, but impressive in regards to anybody can really do it. All right, thank you guys for bearing with me this far. Um, now we're going to just go ahead and get into what we're working on today. Um, I hope I gave you a little bit of a general impression, maybe caught you up to where we're at today with this project. And um, I think we'll learn a lot more along the way. I'm hoping that a lot of you guys comment and communicate, maybe tell me things I'm doing wrong or maybe save me some time by giving me recommendations on what needs to be done. Uh, I just kind of wanted to shoot what I'm working on out in the cyberspace and see what comes back. So uh, really feel free to leave a comment about anything you see or contact me. Uh, you can do it through YouTube, you can do it through the website. Um, I don't feel like plugging all that right now. So let's go ahead and get on to today's projects.